Good evening. Ah, had to check to see if I was actually on here. Welcome to you all as we come to celebrate tonight with the now sixth graders already. But we're going to celebrate the First Communion tonight, and shortly we all will have another grade here. So sorry about this. COVID got in the way of everything this year, and so you guys get pushed back just a little bit. But hopefully tonight we can enjoy the outdoors, which we couldn't have done. Well, we could have done, but we wouldn't have done before. And so take a look at this beautiful area in here as you are in here tonight. Is that it for announcements? Well, before we begin, I should let you know what's all going to happen. At communion time, Heidi's going to go over this again, but there's guys that are going to be doing this. So us guys need all the help we can get. I know you're going to say that. So are you. <laughs> but as you come up here, the kids, the fifth graders will come up and get, uh, sixth graders will come up here and get uh, communion for me. And then they will go back, stuff this in your pocket or whatever, and then you're going to take one of these back, and you will serve the rest of your family. So remember this. Remember that. She says, not bad. <laughs> We're having fun. And so now we have to go into the confession of forgiveness because Heidi and I were having too much fun. No. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and then grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare unto you all the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. And we will sing... Morning cry. Rhyme from dusk till rising 
sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night. Complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your boring cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 43 through 47. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, and they ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And that is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to, Thanks God. Be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and for this place. And we thank you for each of these young men and women who are going to be taking their first communion today. We ask that you'd be with them tonight and always as you're always with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, some could probably argue that that was maybe a little odd passage of scripture for Heidi to choose to base the message on. Because, you know, kids, I know it's been a long time since we've had First Communion classes, but, you know, I didn't hear the word chalice mentioned in there once, or patten, or I didn't hear the words of institution, or intinction, right? We didn't hear any of that. But our passage of scripture tonight from the book of Acts was about the early church, the, the baby church after Jesus had resurrected, and he wasn't there anymore to guide them, but the Holy Spirit was. So they were left with that task of, what do we do now? Where do we go from here? How do we keep this train moving in the same direction that Jesus had us going? And they did what all of us should do when we're just not quite sure what our next step should be. They chose love. You know, when you think about that, the early church, what Ryland just read, they talked about how they took care of each other. How when somebody needed something amongst themselves, they found a way to meet the need. They talked about getting together, breaking bread in each other's home, fellowshipping together. And most importantly, it said, they looked on each other with goodwill. They looked at each other in love. Now that can be our guiding principle in everything we do as Christians. Because we're still, I know we're not like the early, early church, but you know, we're still baby Christians ourselves. Now, when we did our first communion lessons, kids, remember we had three lessons and the coronavirus cut us short of our fourth lesson. Now, our fourth lesson was called Communion Gives Us Strength to Serve. 
Communion gives us strength to serve. Now remember we talked about um, communion as a gift. We talked about Jesus is the Lamb of God. Um, Jesus is the bread of life. But what we need to do is to bring it all full circle and how communion gives us the strength to do what we need to do as disciples. Now, do you remember a key phrase we talked about? And I know, again, guys, it's been a long time. But remember that phrase we talked about the first week? We go to the table to have Christ in us so that we can go be Christ in the world. Okay, kids, let's say it together. Christ in us so that we can be Christ in the world. Christ in us so we can be Christ in the world. So that means not just going to church because mom and dad said you had to or because you're down to acolyte or because, well, that's just what we do on Sundays and then we get together with grandpa and grandma for dinner. All very good things, all very important things. But what's Im more important is that you come to church because there's something in here that needs to hear God's word. That there's something in your spirit and your heart that makes you want to be together with other believers because that's what gives us strength for our journey. Now, we all come from different places. We're all going to be going home to different places. But the Lord's table is the one place where we're all the same. So tonight, kids, you'll be taking your first communion. Pastor Dale is going to be presiding over Holy Communion. And the rest of us are kind of somewhere in the middle. But it doesn't matter. The bread's the same. The cup's the same. God's grace is the same. His forgiveness is the same. And our mission as disciples is the same. So that's where we come, again, strength for our journey. So when you guys come up today, you're going to come up first as students. Pastor Dale is going to give you your first communion. And then you're going to get your hand sanitizer because, guys, let's face it, we can't do anything these days without hand sanitizer. So make sure you get your hand sanitizer. And then you're going to take your tray back to your family group. And you're going to get to serve communion to your family. Now, don't panic. Because there is no right or wrong way to do communion. The only wrong way to do communion is just not to do it. But remember we talked about how as a church we're there to help each other? If you guys are a little nervous about what do I do when I go back? How do I do? What do I say? Remember. We're there to help each other. So mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, big brothers and sisters who've done it before, help them out. Okay? Hold the tray or, or, or hold the bread. Do what you can to help them because we're all in it together, aren't we? Yeah. And remember, what are the two most important words from First Communion? This one I hope you guys remember. Remember the most important words for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. If you can't remember anything else when you're handing out communion, just say, for you. For you. It's been a strange year, hasn't it, guys? I don't think, I don't think we do anything normal like what we used to do. And your first communion is no exception. No exception at all. But do you remember in one of our lessons, we talked about the body of Christ, and we talked about true presence, how, how Jesus in communion, he meets us at the table. It doesn't matter what you're coming to the table with. What matters is what's waiting there for you. And we talked about the body of Christ. And in a lot of different ways, Jesus, when he actually walked the earth, and then we talked about the body of Christ in the elements that we take, but remember, we're the body of Christ. And in your first communion, there might be people who normally would have been here, but they can't. But that doesn't matter. Because we're the body of Christ. And even when we're not together, we are together. Now, Ryland's going to close with a, a poem called The Lord's Table. And then he and I are going to sing a song to end this. And while we're singing that song, think about your place in the body of Christ. Think about what am I good at? What can I do? How can I be a disciple for Christ? All right, here is the Lord's Prayer by Heidi Winter. Where we are together, no matter how distinct, where all are forgiven, no matter the sin, where we get our strength to be as hands extended, where all are accepted, 
and with love welcomed in. declare our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, you have commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. And you have again brought us to your house of prayer to praise your goodness and to ask for your gifts. Accept now in your endless mercy our worship and thanksgiving, and grant us those requests which will be wholesome for us. 
Make us to be children of the light and of the day and heirs of your everlasting inheritance. And remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of your mercies, your whole church, all who join with us in prayer, all our sisters and brothers, wherever they may be in your vast kingdom, who stand in need of your help and comfort. And today we also pray for those who are about to receive the First Communion. Eva Kirchner, Jackson Klein, Dugan Kleiss, Caden Landsman, Daniel Larson, Emilia Lindbergh, Danielle Nielsen, Michaela Reith, <clears throat> Aaron Rohr, Caleb Rosenbrook, Cruz Schneider, Alex Skier, Beckett Stelter, and Logan Stuhl. Pour out upon them the riches of your mercy, so that we, redeemed in soul and body and steadfast in faith, may ever praise your wonderful and holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always through all the ages of ages. Amen. little pause here. <clears throat> you got to do this. There's going to be some nurse out there that's going to yell at me if I don't, right? <laughs> or a doctor. Doesn't have to be a nurse. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again after supper he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he poured it for all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and is shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So now, can I have those kids? Kids. Huh. You people who come up here after I call your name, I'm going to try to spread you out here. Ava. Where's Ava? I'm sorry, Ava. Yep. Coming up here. I'm going to get you close to the Rosenberg family here. If you can just kind of stand like right about there. Jackson. Where did Jackson go? Jackson? Okay. Dugan. Is this six feet? I have no idea. Something like that. Caden. You knew it was you next. Daniel. I saw that. There he is. Amelia, we'll get you close to the stool family. <laughs> oh, I can stay over here. Dan Daniel. Okay. Then what did I say? Oh, uh, you knew what I meant. <laughs> Michaela. There she is. Aaron, I saw you. You're catching up to me. Caleb. 
water. Yeah, dog. Cool. Yeah, you can get a little bit closer there. Alexandra, Alex, I guess. There she is. That's where you've been hiding. I couldn't see you back there. Beckett. There he is. And Logan, you can just stay right there, kind of. I hate to make you work too hard. <laughs> for you.
before we move on, I just want to make sure that everybody got communion that wanted communion. If you didn't, wave at me. Nobody's waving at me. Good. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you all unto his eternal life with him in heaven. And with him, may you be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you got to have this book around just in case you get lost. But I'm okay here. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his favor upon you all, and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. And now you have been served, the body and blood of Christ. You are God's hands and feet in this world. You are always the ambassador for Christ. You are Christ. Amazing. That awesome responsibility that we get from our Lord and Savior is ours. It's a responsibility. So go. Go in peace. Serve the world. sing together. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, a ring of living, sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a Serve the Lord.